Okay. Test, 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 test. I can see folks in the audience as well. Yeah.
أكيد What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Or maybe not. Hey, guys. What's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Perfect. Give me a second. Hey. All right. I don't know if you guys are recording this, but uh, I went ahead and streamed it on my YouTube, just in case. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll record it as well, so we'll we'll have um, oh, double takes if something goes wrong. So no worries. <laughs> okay. Awesome. That's great. I'm not recording it. <laughs> That's cool, Felix. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I don't even a YouTube channel, so this is all new for me. So. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm here, but anyway, let's try to make it fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I invited you um, because I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to talk about, well, once everyone gets in, but yeah, I wanted to kind of go over how we can improve, there's, there's just some things that I think can be improved about this uh, recurring rebalance tool, and I posted it on the Discord or on the channel. Let me see if I pull it up real quick. Yeah, something cool about this is I, I have had two open positions for like, I don't know, 45 days, and it's just always generating fees and auto adjusting. So that's super nice. <laughs> yeah, the fee's been insane. I've, yeah, I've been using your, uh, just looking at your tool, and yeah, fees are insane, man all across the board <clears throat> it's it just you know I, I try to put the word out there like hey you know that's you guys should be farming this you know like this is mm -hmm. in, in not really yeah. a lot of people are are doing it you know no, I, definitely I, I better like, than, yeah. i think everyone's Go just afraid of uh of a crash right they're just like oh man but it's um just the whole market structure very bullish macro long you know a bigger picture and um you know as a liquidity provider we want to we want to look at buying or just farming dips you know because i mean eventually it'll stop the working but um in the meantime you know you just gotta sit in there and and take the other side of that trade and uh you know that that's where the the big opportunity like yeah the the yields are just great you know this is this is the perfect time to be a a liquidity provider and uh but you know i you know i talked to some people they're like man should i start should i start or should i do it or should i wait for a crash i'm like i'm like no if you're waiting for a crash you know you're, you're just trading the market you might as well just trade you know don't yeah. don't provide liquidity if that's your if that's your uh perspective right but if you're looking to provide liquidity, you just got to have, you know, do it on assets that you want to earn long or earn that you want to own long term, own it long term, uh, you know, earn some yield on it, earn some nice yield on it. And, uh, you know, I look for the dips. I'm just like, man, when, when is this thing going to dip, you know, or, um, you know, just have a plan and uh you know and and it works you know so um but with the recurring rebalance tool it's great because uh you can run you can literally run a arrakis arrakis finance or a gamma uh type of vault like a not a vault but i mean they run they have vaults right but you could run that for yourself right you could run one of those things for yourself and have yeah. that thing uh yeah. it, it just manage itself and generate yields yeah. you can run really tight pools uh so it it, yeah. it eliminates yeah. the need for that <clears throat> and you actually know what's going on within the pool right because you're running the strategy whereas 
the the thing with Arrakis and Gamma and these type of vaults is you have no visibility in what they're doing uh, with the strategy. You don't know what, what where the ranges are, how when are they rebalancing, why are they rebalancing. Um, you can't even track in permanent loss um, because you know they <clears throat> it doesn't you know it can't be tracked by like APY vision or or the like, right? So you're just kind of in in the dark. You know what what is what is what is the benefit, right, to 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 using that? So you know, I'm always making that point. You know, like if we could have some visibility in what's going on, um, know exactly what to expect, then yeah, that's cool. But that's not the case. So with this tool, I think you could create that type of strategy and know exactly what's going on. You know, even though even though if it's a strategy that locks in a lot of impermanent loss, you know, if the yields are like amazing, it doesn't matter, right? Like you could you could do a short term type of position, really ramp up the yields, you know, maybe some shit coin launched and and you just want to farm those yields, you know, that's that's great too, you know, because some of these yields could be insane. Yeah, that's true. And I think that the the, the last year of British market was actually preparing us for this. I have been reading a lot of Uniswap papers, following Floodlocker and uh, <laughs> even taking his course and everything and and trying to 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 beat the system. I think that's that's that was my objective since, since the very first days. How can I do to to use Uniswap and never lose? Right? It's like is there a way to do that? <laughs> I, I think that the rebalancer is great. I, I'm using it, but uh, I think it, it can be improved. So right now, it's, I think it's it's only one direction. If I want to be bullish, like the market is right now, it will always be adjusting up, 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 and it, that's great. So I will be looking in permanent gain in that case on the way up. And if I want to buy the dips, I can do the same. Only goes down. But it can only... For me, I think it can only be seen in, in, in one direction. So that's kind of on, on, on the back with Tintin and, and Floodlogger. We can we have been discussing a, a, a new approach and uh, we even have some, some meetings and discussions. Uh, but to, to be honest, I, I, I met with Tintin a couple of days at 4.30 a.m. in the morning, my time, to kind of talk about this idea. So you, you can see how crazy we are about this. <laughs> you were a legend for that, Felix. Yeah, great, great stuff. Yeah, that's a but, uh, yeah. That, no, go for it, Flock. Yeah, that, that's a uh, just great point right there. Um, there's, you know, especially newcomers, they expect to they they, they look at this type of tool, the it's just Uniswap and and liquidity pools as a way to just win right they're just like wow look at these yields i'm just going to come in here and print money right and that's not the case um it's still it's still a tool within the market it's not the holy grail um you still need a strategy right and you need to it's very important to lay out that strategy and understand what your goal is and and it's even more that's like with anything in the markets right like it's you have to plan out what you're going to do in the markets and and follow that plan right and but it's very easy to deviate from that or just jump into an investment and then and then ask questions later right like just if you see something you like you could jump in especially in this bull market and then do your research right and and that doesn't matter you're just holding a token but with uniswap um it penalizes you for that because you you have to swap the the tokens you got to create the right ratio um stake the liquidity and if you're doing it on mainnet you're paying a lot of fees right the time to to do it um you know all these factors and then and then if you go research after you're going to realize oh crap this is not the range i want or this is not where i want to stake and and farm liquidity um then you got to unstake it right sell or swap and and do the whole thing over again which which that's the part that penalizes you so it kind of forces you to really plan out 
what you want to do with with the trade so I, I think in a way it's a way to it helps guide people to to do the right thing right like to do what they need to do to get what they want to get right um and so i i think that's a very important thing to understand with this tool is that it's not gonna it's not gonna yeah, it's not gonna print you money uh you're not gonna win 100 percent of the time but if you have a plan, if it's on assets that either you want, you don't have to want to own them or need a desire to own them, but it definitely creates an edge uh, to want to own the asset, right? So it's, you know, trading and, and the markets is all about putting putting odds in your favor, right? It's, it's like you're placing a bet, you want odds in your favor, what are the odds that you can put in your favor, right? Like... Um, okay, uh, the market on this asset is trading at support, right? Or at resistance, or is that this uh, level of confluence where there's a lot of interest, you know, people are looking at this whole number, um, this is where it last rejected or was last supported, right? Um, this is the, these are the levels of liquidity events that are most likely to happen, right? And as a liquidity provider, you have to understand that and see that and, and say, okay, I need to farm liquidity. I need to be in the market providing liquidity in, in these areas, right? And then you develop your plan from there, what you want, what you want to do, right? But um, yeah, there's so many ways to use this tool uh, to help uh, accomplish that, right? So, but yeah, uh, the the recurring rebalance uh, tool, um, I, so I was, I brought it up uh a little bit or a while ago and here let me just pull it up sorry I might have went too far uh, yeah here we go okay so if uh, it, it, the the tool the tool is great um, but I feel like there could be uh, some improvements on it in, in regards to uh, if you want to automate a pool to if especially if like if your goal is to if your top priority is to minimize or control and permanent loss right then <clears throat> I think this tool can be improved right uh, currently as it is it's great for like a very tight liquidity pool short-term liquidity pools um, it's great for that right um, it could just farm it for you keep it super tight <clears throat> but you will be locking in in permanent loss, right? If if there's a, is say if there's an uh, a liquidity pool you want to farm where you want to actually hold the asset long term and not incur too much in permanent loss or even control it, uh, I think there needs to be another mechanism in here. <clears throat> so I, I was kind of uh, was it Felix? He brought up a while ago the. Uh, using using a formula right to to accomplish this so i i think he can um it, what the formula he brought up is great because what it does is that you plug in that formula and it gives you a baseline of okay this is what uh, it gives you a baseline on a rebalance that says okay this is the <clears throat> this is the minimum with that I can go with on this rebalance to not incur in permanent loss, right? To keep it neutral. So, and then, uh, so I was thinking, okay, what if on the, on the Aperture Finance tool, we could plug in a number, say like where we initially staked our, our pool, like say, let's take Ethereum USDC, for example, right? Say you staked it at $2,000, you staked the liquidity pool, now it's now it's at a range, right? Whether it's to the upside or downside, doesn't matter. <clears throat> you you plug in. You're going to you, you, when you stake that pool on on Aperture, it tracks your initial staking price. So it would track that you're staked at two thousand dollars, and then it would track the value of the pool at the stake, right? Say you staked a thousand dollars worth, right? And then say it went out of range to the downside you're now down on the position 10%, right? 
So now your position is worth 900. Um, you're down. You're out of range. Uh, the pool or the tool is going to rebalance you, but it takes into account. Okay, you stake that two thousand dollars Ethereum price. The value of your pool was one thousand dollars at that price. And and you can put in a maybe like a threshold, like a range of okay, this is how much in permanent loss I'm willing to take, but. Um, you can have a way to uh, input how tight you want the pool based on that based on that number, right, or on that formula, right. So if it can do that, you can fully automate like even liquidity pools that you're in long term, right, and and it could stay within that threshold of, imper of impermanent loss, right. But I'm not a <clears throat> I'm not a developer. Or a programmer right so i i don't know how to do it um so yeah so that's that's kind of like my feedback on it. it like i think that's that's what's missing on this tool that would really yeah, mid elevate you know yeah so i'm gonna stop there yeah go ahead yeah no yeah, no I'll go for it yeah, so uh, my name is Crypto Noah. I work with Slow Locker. We, make, we put out a lot of yield farming content. So I think it's something that will be helpful to everyone here. I've been yield farming for about two years. Um, in terms of mindset, I've been studying a lot of like traditional market makers. And like people always ask me, like, oh, how do I beat impermanent loss? Or like, like Float Locker was saying, should I start now? I think, um, and this is actually a biblical principle. Um, yield farming, I, I set aside like 20 to 25% of my portfolio strictly for yield farming. I don't even worry about impermanent loss. And actually, most of my strategies, um, the way I win is I try to get as much impermanent loss as I can get. So, um, for example, like the, the best pool that I'm in right now is the Maple Eat pool. And I'm in like a wider range and a pretty narrow range. And I don't even worry about the principle. All I do is I try to get a high yield. And once it goes out of range, like it went out of range uh, like two days ago or a day ago or so. Or so. And uh, I essentially took that ETH because ETH went above 3K and Maple dropped a little bit. I took that ETH and I bought Maple. So it's like if you compare that with someone who's trying to like use yield farming to pay their bills, once impermanent loss sets in and your bills are paid, you won't have anything to show for it. But if you are taking your rewards and you're either sending them to another wallet or you're using them to buy cash or buy an altcoin that you're bullish on like for example the the maple ETH pool that i'm in i'm getting like a little over 100 percent apr so let's say i'm getting i'm in that pool for six months and i have 12k as my principal and i'm able to accumulate 6k in free maple if i take that um that 6k i can turn that into you know six figures in the bull market and then instead of uh compounding my rewards I rebalance my portfolio on a monthly basis. So now that 20 to 25% of my portfolio that was set aside for yield farming represents a larger portion. Um, and just going back to the biblical concept, like I'm not trying to like convert anyone or anything. I'm just strictly talking about the principle. Um, if you, and I made a video on this. Abraham was the first person in the Bible that God said was rich. And he made him rich in silver, gold, and livestock. And that was his investment portfolio. The silver served as the cash. Uh, and cash is obviously used to buy the dip. Like all three of these things have their own season. The silver is used as cash, everyday transactions. You had gold as an asset that was used to like speculate on the larger purchases. And then the livestock, you using your sheep to sell wool and you're using your cows to sell milk so that you can get paid in silver and gold so you can accumulate more assets of cash. So with an everyday portfolio, you have your stable coins, uh, which is used to, you know, buy assets. You have your cryptos, which are used to sell for cash when they go up. And then you have your cash flow, a.k.a. yield firm, and that's used to either accumulate more cash or accumulate more assets. So when you look at it as a portion of your portfolio, and you're not so much worried about beating in permanent loss or anything like that. You're just literally trying to make rewards and use those rewards to buy assets that you're bullish on so you can sell them. A higher prices when they go up and rebalance. There's no way you can lose. And if you look at Citadel, which is the largest market maker, uh, which is kind of like yield farming and trap buy, yield farming 
has been around since the 19th century in market making, they don't only they don't use their whole portfolio to yield farm. They have a certain portion of their portfolio that they have in cash. If you look at their balance sheet, they have a certain portfolio uh, portion in assets, and they use a certain portion in market making. And if that's not how you win, they wouldn't be doing it for over 100 years. So I just wanted to come in and add that. Hopefully that's helpful for everyone. All right, yeah, that's some that's some really good points, Noah. All right, so um, do we do we have uh, McDavid in here or no? I don't see him in here. No, I don't think he's here. Uh, okay, he's here today. Um. Would it maybe help to have a little bit of a visual, maybe, uh, to see maybe with the strategy of Felix? I don't know if you want to if you want to share this strategy, uh, Felix, or not. I made some models with it. Um, it might yeah. maybe help to have a little visual on how to uh, maybe program a recurring rebalancer uh, to try and follow that strategy. Uh, what, what what do you think, Felix? And what do you think, Float? Oh yeah, go for it. So that's that's what we have been, we have, we have been working on the on the back. So yeah, please share it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Um, let me try and share my screen. Okay. You guys should see a uh, trading view chart, right? Yes, sir. We see it. Awesome. All right. This is DeFi Lab. Should switch trading view and then an Excel file. Yeah. Should be should be should be cool. Okay, awesome. So, um, what Felix is has been working on, and in my opinion, was was kind of a stroke of genius, is what Float uh, already mentioned his um, his formula, and it's just one strategy to do it. Like, there's multiple strategies, like Float said as well, um, which you can integrate in, like. Uh, uh, in everything that's concentrated liquidity, you can DCA, you can protect yourself with, say, 80% uh, of USDC in your pool and just 20% of your assets, so you're protected when price goes down. Uh, you can do go vice versa, you can go uh, pretty long and bullish on the markets by having 80% of the volatile asset and 20% of stables in your, in your pool, and you can use the recurring rebalancer to keep that percentage. So every time... Let's say your liquidity pool um, goes over or under 20% USDC, you can automatically rebalance to get that back, basically. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of different possibilities. Now, this one is especially interesting for me and for a more um, market-making perspective. And it's what Felix calls, and please stop me, Felix, if, if um, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining something uh, badly, but he calls it the... Um, the geometrical mean and the geometrical mean you can uh, you can get to it uh, it's it's a number and you can get to a geometrical mean by uh, taking the uh, square root of the uh, top well top range and bottom range so square square root of um, uh, top range times bot range is geometric mean. This is this will be your ge geometric mean. It will give you a number. Basically, it's not always the case, but you can uh, you can imagine geometric mean as almost always being like the center of your liquidity pool. So what I like to do in trading view to because I'm a visual learner is I draw my liquidity pools on the chart. So I I take the top range, I take the bottom range, and whenever they the liquidity pool breaks. It stops there, but it's basically like one big, uh, big rectangle. So here I made a model, and you can use DeFi Lab to do the calculations I've done. I'm not going to do it live again. I've all done it uh, for you guys. Um, there's also a handy tool that we made uh, that, that I can share later on as well, um, so that you don't need DeFi Lab, but you can just do it in Trading View. But basically, what I made here is a model based on um, Felix's math with the geometrical mean, uh, geometric mean, yeah. 
So we start at a certain price. Here it's an, um, I, I can't find the English word for it, but it's an arbitrary, arbitrary price that we start at. So that's, it's $5,000 in ETH. <laughs> okay, let's hope so we'll get there. I'm sure, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll get there one time, one day in, in this bull market. But let's say we want to, um, we want to open the first pool with a geometric mean of $5,000. What does this mean? Well, you're going to create liquidity pools around this geometric, ge geometric mean. Whenever price goes back to this geometric mean, you'll have minimized or almost no impermanent loss. So your first liquidity pool, you start off with quite tight ranges, you're okay with it, because once it breaks up or down, in my model, if once it breaks up, you just enlarge the liquidity pool, right? You, you, go, you go with larger, um, I just said larger ranges. When it breaks again to the top side, you go even larger ranges. That until the price goes back one day to your geometrical mean. Okay, I've done the calculation. So let's say we start with 10,000 US dollars. It's around, it's two ETH at the price of $5,000 per Ethereum. Sorry about that. So $10,000 to ETH, $5,000 per Ethereum. Your first liquidity pool has a top range, 5,143. And based on these two, these two numbers, you can calculate the bottom range of that first pool needed to stay at the geometrical mean of 5,000. So if you put in the top range, 5,134, and your geometric mean from the formula, from this formula, right? You can get to the bottom range needed to have a geometric mean of 5,000. So this pool, yes, perfect, nice, Felix. So this, this, uh, this first pool, it broke, let's say, pretty fast because it's a tight range. This multiplier here is how many more efficient this range is compared to Uniswap V2. Remember, Uniswap V2 is from zero to infinity, right? When you concentrate your liquidity, you actually use leverage. I think uh, Float explains it like that as well. You use leverage on your Uniswap V2 position. You concentrate that liquidity in a smaller range. So this liquidity is multiple times more effective, right? How many times more effective is this range? 71.02 times. This is something you can, you can find in, in DeFi Labs. If you put in your uh, your ranges, you can find it here. Okay, it's in the concentrated liquidity multiplier. Now in our in the in the trading view tool that we made in house, you can just see it on the tool. Um, but you can all do it manually on uh, on DeFi Lab. So this this specific pool is seventy one point zero two x times more efficient. What does this mean? Is that this small pool here will have 71 times 2.83%, which is like the APRs, Uniswap V2 pools generated in the last 30 days. This is really hard, right? To, um, to try, and, try and map is um, the amount of fees that will generate. But DeFi Labs uh, says that in the last 30 days, Uniswap, had an, uh, Uniswap V2 had an APR of 2.83%. So we need to multiply that 71 by 2.83%, and then you have your APRs for that pool. Uh, we'll see in the Excel file later on what it is like um, the mean of the whole strategy, how many APRs that will be. Um, but just to to explain to you like the the mindset behind this. So once this small pool breaks and price breaks up, we can calculate what's the value of the pool when it breaks here on the top range. We can also calculate that with formulas in DeFi Lab. I did it. I did it for you guys already. It's also in the indicator tool on, on, on uh, TradingView. So with a starting capital of 10K, uh, when you break 5,141, so this range here, you're at a total value of 10,071.34 USD or 1.957 Ethereum. So this is what we call impermanent loss, right? So yes, your pool went up in dollar values. You made $71. But the impermanent loss, this is what we call it impermanent gain, right? Because you didn't lose dollar value, but the problem is you lost Ethereum value. 
Because with that, with $10,071.34, you cannot buy two ETH anymore at that price. You can only buy 1.957 ETH. So that is your impermanent loss. It's the ETH you can you can buy. When price goes down, dollar value goes down, but the amount of ETH you have in the pool goes up. So it's impermanent loss if you if you think in dollars, but it's impermanent gain if you think it in 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 Ethereum. That's what Float says as well. Is that it, it's it's always a very positive thing if you LP into tokens that you'd like to hold long term, that you'd like to accumulate. Because it doesn't really bother you to have more Ethereum than you started with, as long as you think price will go back up again after a while, right? Okay, so that said, that those are the those are the basics, of course. So we keep going in our model. So these ten thousand seventy one, we reinvest into another pool. Remember, the next pool needs to have the same geometric mean as the one before. Because if the one after, if all the pools have the same geometric mean, one pr once price goes back to it, the impermanent loss would basically be zero. It's not exactly zero, but it's very, very close to it, right? And that's the point. So once price goes back to our blue line, our geometric mean, basically all the fees generated before in all those pools before that are free. You can do with it what you want. You can compound them in your strategy if you want to. You can go buy other tokens like Crypto Noah said. You can invest them into the market. You can basically do whatever you want with it. You can cash them out. Or... But the point is, when, when price goes back here, the value of your pool will be almost or very close to the same value as you started. Right? That's the point of this strategy, and that's why I think it's a stroke of genius. And there's a second thing uh, that we'll see later on as well, why I think it's a stroke of genius is that you can basically control when you take the impermanent loss, which is, which is a great thing, but, but there, we, we aren't there yet. So let's continue into our, uh, into our model. So we break one more time. Uh, no, let's say we break here. So we reinvest the $10,071 into the new pool. Okay, so we start over. This new pool can be automated, maybe, with the automatic uh, recurring rebalancer, right? That's, that's why I'm, I'm showing you this, because I'm not a programmer either. But if I can communicate what the, what the goal is of the model, maybe we can try and work together with the developers of Aperture to see what's possible, right? Yeah, so this is... Reinvest yes. I just want to interject here. This, this is amazing, and um, I'm glad we're recording it so um, McDavid and his team can review this because if they can implement this... But yeah, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I, think, I think it's a cheat code float, really. If, yeah. if we can implement this in an automatic rebalancer, it's just a, a cheat code, really. Yeah, it's, game it's over. Unfair, but, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> game over. Yeah. But, but let's continue with, uh, with the model. Wow, okay, it's, so, it's not cheating. Yes. It, has, it has a lot of research on the back. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yes, for sure, Felix, <laughs> I definitely. The, I spent the whole beer market in, investigating this. <laughs> Really is, and thanks for your time uh, doing that, Felix. Because uh, it's it, it changed my life. I'm sure it's changed uh, the the strategies of Float as well. It's it's really impressive the work you did there. Yeah, I I've been searching like how can we? There's got to be someone smart enough to be able to figure out what I'm doing manually, right? Like I see this in my head, yeah. and I'm just like, okay, this is how. And I when I try to explain it to people, it's like, okay, is there a formula? I always it's there's always that question. Is there a formula? I'm like. Uh, I'm sure there is, <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome that he found it, man. That's great. 100%, dude. 100%, yeah, yeah. It brings a smile to my face, huh? Since I know it, yeah. Okay, but guys, let's, let's, let's continue. So we reinvest, basically, we, we, we break the top range, we reinvest what, uh, what that pool is worth, we invest all the USDC because we're 100% USDC in the next pool. And so we keep continuing doing that. The calculations of the indicator and of DeFi Lab tell us that uh, when this range breaks, we have 10,109.61 USDC, or the value of the pool is this in dollars, yeah? Or we have with that value, we can now buy 1.9 ETH. So you can see the impermanent loss in terms of ETH every time price breaks to the upside. You can see it visually here. Yes, your dollar value goes up, but the amount of ETH you can buy with that value goes down. So for ETH maxis, this is not a good thing. If you don't care about uh, Ethereum or whatever longer term, you just care about dollars, this is cool. Psychologically, um, taking impermanent gain is way easier than taking impermanent loss. 
uh, for most people, right? Because you see the dollar value of your pools going up and it's, psychologically it's, it's way easier to do. But that, that aside. So here we break again and now our liquidity pool is quite, quite a large range. You can see them. We started with 71.02x more efficient than Uniswap V2 ranges. Here it's 35.2 and now here we're 22.36x. So in your head, uh, and keep this in mind, if it keeps breaking to the upside, your pools will be larger and larger and larger. Um, because they need, when price goes back down, they need to be at the same value as you started. To be able to do that, logically, you need more and more USDC in your pool to buffer, to give that buffer if price goes down, right? So basically, more and more parts of your pool, if price keeps going up, isn't used, it isn't active capital, it's just there to cushion your fall back down, right? I hope you guys, you can, you guys can see it and understand it. So there's, there's one moment, there's going to be a moment where the, the range is so large that your APRs will be maybe 10%, 20%, 30%, something that is not worth it for you anymore. And we'll see later on what we'll, we, we'll do then, but we'll, we'll move the strategy up again. We'll take our impermanent loss. But until that, uh, not until that's the case, price can still, if you think price can still go down back to your um, geometrical mean, you can keep your ranges wide. You just have to wait. You just have to wait patiently while you're making fees, yeah? Because all along the way, you're generating fees from your liquidity pools. Let's say in my example, and this is a completely arbitrary example, let's say we don't break the top range from our third pool now in our strategy, but we go back down to our geometrical mean. Well, our calculations, and uh, Felix already um, uh, already shared some calculations on that as well, but my models um, tell the same thing, is that in this, um, so in this, in this view, we go back, we break it, we go back to a geometrical mean again here, and I calculated what is my value of this pool. Remember, in this pool, we started with 10,109.61, the value of the break of the last pool. So we reinvested this in this pool. So we started here. If price goes down to the geometrical mean, which is here, how much value is my pool? You can do this with DeFi Lab, or again, you can use our tool. Here we have 9,910.2 USD or 1.982 Ethereum. This is not exactly 10,000 USD where we started at, where we started with, but it's damn close, right? It is really, really close. It's like, um, it's, I think it's 0.9% um, difference. 0.9% difference is nothing for this volatility. And we'll, we'll see the estimated days for the whole strategy later on. I'll give you the numbers in, in the Excel file and they're, they're pretty impressive. The thing is, um, and I, 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 I told Felix as well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you think of this uh, float. <clears throat> But my idea was to, once we get for the first time back to the geometrical mean, instead of letting that difference widen by, um, by uh, keep going, keeping going with our, our strategy, I'd say to add the $80 difference here, so the $89 uh, difference here, to put it back in to start over again, before starting over again. I think that would minimize the widening of the difference of the geometrical mean in the future i think but i don't know what you guys think about that yeah absolutely but like you said it's it's such a small number especially yeah. over that time period that the yields you generate would just like totally yeah, blow, blow that out of the water, water. and yeah definitely. um this is like what i'm what i'm gonna say here is is more of like kind of like art in a way um like this you have this formula right and you and say like you you're going through these ranges or through these rebalances and you can even get more uh granular with it you can you can say in the third box where it's at a 22.36x uh multiplier as the price starts reverting back towards its geometric mean you can actually you say price dips back into the pool that was a 35.2x 
you can you can rebalance back into that range, right? Like you can get you can you can if price gets back into that range, you can like okay, I could revert back into the previous pool, right? Sometimes what I like to do is I like to uh, keep that pool open. Either I'll leave like a small dollar amount in there in the previous pool. And I'm like, okay, when yeah. price reverts, I'll just dump my liquidity back in there and then uh, I'm good to go, right? Like I'm, I'm, right, I'm back into a tighter pool. Um, I still have uh, the same, uh, you know, I'm still respecting that geometric mean because that second pool, the 35.2x pool, is still uh, is still valid, right? It, there's nothing, Active, yeah, yeah, you know. Gotcha. So th this is where it starts becoming more like art. How much you want to be, how active you want to be, right? Yeah. And there's that opportunity, right? Because you can leverage up your liquidity pool to generate more yields as as it gets exactly. back yeah. towards your. But for just to keep it simple here, um, yes, this this what what you asked here, where you can just add the the difference here when it gets when price gets back to the mean. Uh, yeah, you could you could add. The, the amount that way you can uh, also track right if you if, if it helps you to, tr to track you know and it's all up to you right um, yeah but yeah this is great explanation yeah man that was awesome as well I, I didn't think about um, even optimizing in that range I mean why not yeah the, it's it's you, you can be as active if you want as you want actually that's yeah it's awesome absolutely that's yes cool info. yeah I'm gonna try and play with that as well to see uh, to see the differences. Okay, awesome. Um, so we're we're very very darn close, and and we're gonna see we made a lot of APRs here, way more than the eighty dollars that we lost here, way way more. So that's that's why it's super interesting. And what is the the second thing that is super interesting is once you reach back to a geometric mean, you can start over again. You can start over again with your pools with very high multiples, right? Uh, very high uh, uh, multipliers. So in this. Uh, in this example, started over this range uh, because price was like correcting fast. Like this is all it's like arbitrary, right? So we've always we we've we've stayed um, only for a small time in, in in this new range, but now we broke into the downside, right? So we broke into the downside, and now you see uh, da -da -da, this is this is actually wrong. I'm sorry about that. I need to change it, but I think I got it in my models. Yes, it's obviously not this USD, but it is 9738.69 uh, USD. Um, 1.994. This is the right one. Yes. Uh, yeah, so here we break and we take another impermanent loss. But you, what you can see here is it's the difference. It's the difference if you're an ETH maxi, you're happy here. If you're if you're just looking at face value of your dollars in your pool, you're not happy. Why? Because remember, we started with ninety nine ten point two, or if you added the eighty nine in there, you start again at ten thousand. But here you are at nine thousand seven hundred thirty eight point sixty nine here at the bottom range of your tight pool, and you think like, oh. Shit, I, I lost some dollar value, but actually, uh, you've got some impermanent gain on your ETH value because we started here at 1.982, and here we're back to 1.994 ETH, right? So it's all in the eyes of the beholder against who you compare yourself to with liquidity pools, and that's something that I keep telling people as well, and I keep repeating. So let's say we go back to a wider range here, 30.71. We continue, we continue, we continue. And basically, I'll, I'll not uh, keep more of your time because you know. Uh, you know the deal right now, is that again, when we hit the geometrical mean, um, you can see another small difference, small small change here. But I think this would be minimized if you add those $90 uh, back here. But that's just, it's just details, really. So every time you hit back to a geometrical mean, you can tighten up again, you can continue. And that's how you optimize, basically, for APRs and just market making, just trying to get those APRs out of the market not thinking about a long bias or a bearish bias, you don't really care. But now, what happens if price goes to a level in your technical analysis that says that uh, there's, so, there's almost no chance anymore that we go back to our geometrical mean? Let's say price is so bullish and your technical analysis tells you 
that once you we reach this 5756 here there's such a small chance we're going back to your geometrical mean well what you can do then is basically um, move your geometrical mean so move this the blue line and move it up and start the strategy over again and what is really cool about this is that you can control you have control over when you take your impermanent loss so remember, yes, here, every time a pool breaks, you don't have control on the impermanent loss. Your pool value um, changes along the way. 9.7k here, almost back to 10k here. You don't really have control of it. But you know that once you keep your strategy in, in mind, when price goes back to your geometrical mean, your impermanent loss is nullified, right? So as long as you keep uh, your strategy intact, it's fine. It's only when you move basically the whole structure here, you move it back up, that's when you take your impermanent loss. And how much impermanent loss do you take? Well, it is the difference between your starting capital. Remember, we started with 10K and 2 ETH here. And yes, there are, there are small differences, but again, they're negligible. Yeah. So your starting capital was 10 grand, 2 ETH. When you move your geometrical mean up, let's say when it breaks this white pool here, you say, nah, there's no, no chance, no chance price goes back down to your geometrical mean. You can calculate the value of the pool here when it breaks here, which I calculated, it will be 10,110.64 US dollars. But you have, would have lost a lot of ETH. You would have lost 1.752, uh, you would only be able to buy 1.752 ETH. Right, this is the number here. This is the impermanent loss you're taking on the upside, remember. You're losing in Ethereum, you're gaining in dollar value. But so you, you lost a significant portion of ETH here. You've lost uh, 0.248 ETH. And at the value, at the price of that day, uh, of, of, of uh, 5,766 per ETH, the difference is 1,430 US dollars. This is basically your impermanent loss that you take. If this goes up, if you if you move this up, if you start over again. So what does this mean? Is that, or you can see all of this, all of these fees. Oh, sorry, all of these fees here, all of them. They must be more than one thousand four hundred thirty dollars. And if that's the case, you even won against some someone just holding Bitcoin, buying Bitcoin here and selling it here. That's the impermanent. Um, buying Ethereum here and selling selling ETH here. That's when you win. How I look at it is a different way, is in my new range, in my new geometric mean, we need to stay around this purple line, around this geometric mean, long enough to make up for $1,430, right? That's, that's how I look at it. And this is easily beatable, okay? But then you just start over, you move your geometrical mean up, you bank your impermanent loss, but it's you that chooses when to do it, right? And that will depend on your technical analysis or, or your view on the market. If you want to take the impermanent loss to the, to the upside, or if you want to take the impermanent loss to the downside, if, if, if price keeps going down, right? So that's the model on TradingView, and I hope it's clear. I, I know it's a lot of information there uh, that we had, but I also put it into an Excel model. Uh, it's, it's done really quick, so it could have uh, a few mistakes. And I did uh, take a few um, things for uh, are granted here, basically, without, without checking it. But if you, can, if you can see it, here are all the details. So all the ranges of all the pools and the multipliers as well. We, we've seen it in, uh, in TradingView. So it's, it's basically all of this, but in, in an Excel file. Um, here you see the differences of the geometric means, right? When, when we go back to it, the small differences between them. But let's say, and I, I, I screwed up a little bit in this, in this model, because you can see it's on very short time frames. This is not realistic. So to make it realistic, um, I've, chosen, I've, I've chosen like the widest range. So the widest one is it's, it's around, um, it's around 30%. Right, so I've I've put that in. This was twenty five percent actually. That would give this in on on Ethereum. 
So this is the amount of days, like optimally, of course, you could, you could stay in there. So how much would it be optimally? It would be uh, even like 524 days, but you, you need to be very lucky if, if, if you can get that. Yeah. And so let's, this is, yeah. uh, this is very important too. Um, yeah. as a liquidity provider, time is your friend, right? You, the more time you can stay in a liquidity pool or in a sequence of liquidity pools based on your trade idea, the better, right? Because the longer you're in there, the, the more yield you're going to generate. So um, I know I know in crypto, we all are, you know, acclimated to the the quick, fast gains, right? Of, of, of some volatile tokens, right? But uh, here, it's got to be a lot of patience. And that's why it's important to, uh, to track your liquidity pools, right? Track your performance and understand exactly what your liquidity pools are doing, right, over time. Because if you don't track, a month down the line, you could have rebalanced like 10, 20 times. Uh, I'm not saying that that's the case, but um, if you rebalance so many times and you're not tracking, you're just going to, eventually, eventually you're going to forget about it and um, you're just going to be in the present trade, right? And then over time, if you're not tracking your impermanent loss, um, the issue here is that impermanent loss doesn't, it's not a big hit on us on one liquidity pool, right? It's very small. And over time, say over the course of a year of taking impermanent loss a time and time again, that compounds. And, you know, like Warren Buffett says, you know, compounding, you know, with, com he, you know what he says with compounding, right? And as your losses compound, you're not even going to realize it. You, you may even be in a profit, right? And you're like, oh, I'm making money. But then you, over time, like over the course of a, year, of a year, you're like, well, I've been farming 100% APRs. Why am I only up 15, 20%? Or even worse, why am I in a loss, right? And that's because of impermanent loss, right? And if you're not tracking that and controlling it, it's very important to control it. And the only way to control it is to track it. So... Uh, I just kind of want to throw that in there and uh, I'll stop there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, definitely super important uh, uh, flow. This is the silent yeah. killer. Um, yeah, go Felix, please. Yeah, no, something I wanted to share. So um, what is really nice about this strategy is that you are not hedging. So I think that's the key. So you can actually maintain lo your liquidity by hedging, you know, shorting Applying USDC, shorting Ethereum, and kind of adjusting that all the time. This strategy doesn't need that, and that's that's the beauty of it, right? If you're super bullish or you think that the market is gonna be like super boring, I was for the last full year with Ethereum running around two thousand dollars, plus minus two hundred dollars, and you keep this strategy, you have make it. I don't know, two hundred percent APR on Ethereum USDC in that simple pool only, right? So uh, I think this is extremely powerful. Um, myself, I'm sometimes tempted when the APR goes up into not follow the strategy, but when I stick to it, <laughs> I can tell you this really, really works. Yeah, that that temptation definitely creeps in. But uh, yeah, that's a good point. The hedging part. Um, if you add hedging to this, uh, what what you do here is uh, not. Uh, I mean, yes, you could you could hedge out. Uh, volatility risk uh, or just exposure to price to delta you could hedge out the delta exposure but uh, uh, to to really to hedge the main the main uh, draw to hedge something like this is to um, increase is to be able to increase the size of your liquidity pools right if you can hedge now you hedge out a lot of delta uh, delta risk, right? You can have a larger liquidity pool and now you can even generate more yields, right? And that's where it starts getting a little bit more complicated, but um, it's definitely possible to, to delta hedge, right? Like in 2022, I did a lot of delta hedging um, because I just didn't know, you know, where the market, if the market was going lower or what, but I was able to keep a, a larger size in the pools with a smaller delta exposure, right? Because you're short the asset and um, this can be, this is just another strategy you can add, right? Like, and, and the idea with providing liquidity is, is not trying to time the market, right? It, the idea is to stay in the market, right? And that's why 
I, you know, I always say like, it's definitely an edge to want to own the asset, right? Because uh, if time's in your favor, if you need to be in liquidity pools for a long period of time to generate a lot of yield, right? You're going to have to have some sort of desire to want to own that asset, right? Um, and on top of that, over time, you're going to generate a lot of yields. So if you're, if you're setting up, if you're setting up a liquidity pool, now I kind of lost my train of thought here. Um, sorry. Um, but, but yeah, I, I was just saying like, if you, if you, if you set up these pools and, uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there, man. I was on, I was onto something there. Um, yeah, you were onto something. Because yeah, we, what, what did I say? Hedging, like, like how, yes. how do you hedge? The, how do you hedge these pools? Um, yes, yes, or, okay, or, yeah, yeah. So with 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 hedging now, now you're removing delta, a lot of delta risk, right? And you just have you could have large liquidity pools, and what what that does is. Uh, uh, like I have, uh, like I, I like to lay out levels of what my, you know, depending on what I think of the market, say if I'm bullish on the market, if I'm super bullish on the market, which I am right now, which I have been since like January, 2023, um, I like to set up bullish liquidity pools. Right. And, uh, but right now I'm like macro bullish. So what I did was, uh, like the very bullish level would be, uh, buying the the asset in spot like say ethereum and then lend it out right to say ave or you could short it on a or sorry not short it um just lend it out to ave and then borrow usdc and then uh farm all coins all coin liquidity pools so now what you're doing is you're creating a a a long position that will not take any impermanent loss Right, because you're you're just spot long Ethereum. Now you can take, uh, you can borrow USDC, and now you could farm altcoin liquidity pools, which are generating 200, 300, a thousand percent APRs, right? And and you could just farm those liquidity pools uh, to your heart's desire. Now, um, that's of course there's more risk associated with that, right? Because now you're <laughs> yeah, leveraged, no, but, right? You're leveraged. Yeah. But um, as long as you control that leverage, right, you could just generate a little alpha on top, right? And what I've been doing is I'm generating about 8% per month on top of my long position in Ethereum, right? I've been long Ethereum since, you know, 1500, right? So, and then I borrowed against it and I've been generating yields over the past, since November, right? So on average, about 8% a month. So that's 8% I didn't have on top of the gains of Ethereum, right? So um Definitely. that's the super bullish side right now now if you want to just get to bullish right you could just set up you don't have to go leverage right you could just farm liquidity pools more bullet with a bullish tilt which means that you own more of the asset um you keep the lower range a little tighter and the upper range a little <clears throat> a little wider right so that way you take um you take advantage of the price appreciations and then and then you go neutral <clears throat> which is which is uh you know more 50 50 right 50 50 liquidity pools and then uh you could set up and then going more to the bearish side you could have more of a like a dca type of liquidity pool right where it's more heavy in a stable coin versus ethereum right that way you're um minimizing the the exposure to to, to delta right of of price right you're expo limiting your exposure to price uh, by having a stable coin heavy liquidity pool and you can even manage it at different you know different levels right you could have like specific uh amount you could have a predetermined amount of delta you don't want to go beyond right like say if it say like okay i don't want to be more than uh 50 long or i don't want 50 percent more than 50 percent of my liquidity pool to be in the asset right so if it gets down to 50 yeah. i will sell off some of that and, and then, you know, respect to the geometric mean, right? You can manage your liquidity pools. And still, even though you're selling off the asset, if the price is trending down, you can still have, uh, you can still repet, uh, have no impermanent loss, right? Or very minor impermanent loss by using this geometric mean, um, managing liquidity pools. And on top of that, by selling off some Ethereum as price is going down, you also minimize some risk to the downside, right? Like, 
<clears throat> you're not you're not as exposed, right? Depending on your risk tolerance, right? And and this is where this is where that where I say it's kind of like an art where where it comes in, right? And then on the extreme end of uh, or sorry, yeah, more to the extreme end on the bear side. Now you could um in on top of the DCA strategy, uh, you could go maybe more 50-50 and then use a, a delta hedging strategy where you borrow the where, where say you take USDC, you lend it out to Aave, borrow Ethereum, right? And have that Ethereum match up with your holdings. Uh, like say you you pair it with USDC, now you're <clears throat> now you're uh, more of delta neutral, right? And and this is where when you have a uh, delta hedge you can go larger in the pool and and the ben and the trade off here is that you know with markets there's always compromise and trade offs right and here is what what you're doing is that you're giving up that exposure to the upside in, in if price would go up because you're short the asset in a delta hedge pool but in exchange for that you have the ability to go larger in the pool you know, you could put more crypto in there to generate more yields on top of that. So there, there's that trade-off. And then on the very extreme bearish side, uh, you could just borrow the asset, right? Like say you park USDC in Aave, you borrow Ethereum, and then you sell off the entire uh, the entire lot of Ethereum to USDC. Now you're short Ethereum. And then you could farm liquidity pools that are um, very USDC heavy right and maintain that that exposure right so you you can see how i went from bullish all the way down to bearish right super bullish to super bearish right and you can with 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 that with that uh knowledge you can stay in the markets all the time you can always stay in the market and time in the market is is the best friend to liquidity providers so man that's 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 golden info there float um because there's there's like infinite possibilities on how you can just try and get the ratios as you wish, like the amount of delta exposure you want into the market. Like, do you want leveraged, uh, complete exposure, or do you want to hedge? And these these are just great because like most people, they just know like okay, yeah, short perps, right? But there's like so many so many different ways of of, of hedging in in your like if 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 you got your strategy. Um, and you decided on your strategy, you can just, there's, there's almost, almost infinite amounts, uh, on how you can, um, you can integrate that strategy. That was beautiful. All the, all that information is golden guys, like seriously. Um, so thanks for sharing that float. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Felix, do you have anything to add actually? Uh, no. So it's been, it's been an amazing chat. Uh, I think we should... Well Actually, for some point, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. If if you, I was gonna, I was thinking you, were, you still had more, to, or you do have more to present. Um, just, but before just we go like into that, minutes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Before Please. we go into that, I, I also want to point out on on uh in the previous uh in your previous page on the trading view view, um, now people are now this is where it even gets where it probably will blow a lot of people's minds that are into this right, like us is uh now how what if you know people say okay i could get back to break even on my holdings at the geometric mean right well it doesn't even stop there like depending like say three three rebalances in when we're in that large range say if uh say if you rebalance it more uh to be able to anticipate the downside you get more aggressive, like bearish, uh, you're, you're more bearish, right? Now, if you set up, you can rebound or uh, structure your liquidity pool to be able to take advantage of that. And then at the geometric mean, not only will you be break even, but you can actually have a gain in, 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 in the, in the value of the, of the liquidity pool, right? You could um, uh, sustain the value, right? You won't lose as much value on the way down. And also, uh, you probably won't, or, or actually you would have more, you, you would essentially have more Ethereum by the time you, by the time you get back 
to the geometric mean, right? And exactly, this is where that's why it comes back to like this is kind of like an art, right? Like where where you where you implement other uh, you know other other strategy or your own strategy into this, right? Like this is not a strategy in itself. This is just the tool, right? Yeah. Yeah, now, exactly. Yeah. You input your strategy like, okay, I want to own more Ethereum by the time we get to the back to the geometric mean. Or even like on the way down, you could be like, okay, I want to I want to hold more Ethereum on the way up, right? And now that's where you it, where you know, that's where the trade-off comes in. Okay, what's the trade-off? Okay, well, you might you you're, you're going to need a wider pool, which means you're going to have to f- uh, forego some yield in exchange for holding more uh, Ethereum or holding a larger value back at the geometric mean, right? And um, you know, I've I've shown a couple uh, actual examples of this breaking down real live, uh, uh, real live trades, right? Like where I've I it's on my it's on my Twitter, um, but yeah, I, I laid out real live trades. This was back in uh, back in March, I believe, last year where I did a run with Ethereum. And uh, when we got back to that geometric mean, I was up a significant amount on top of what I gained in yield, right? Um, so the liquidity pool increased in value back at the, back at the, at the starting points. So it increased in value and I earned yield on top of that, right? Of course, there's a the trade-off there. There's risk. There's, you know, you're holding more of the asset Right or on the on the upside, you're holding less of the asset, right? Yeah. So if it goes against you, you know, but that's that's where you account you account for that, and you you create that. That's where that's there's so many variables and options on how you can create your own strategy to fit you, right? So I yeah. I just kind of want to lay that out there. Yeah, beautiful. I think you you've blown a lot of minds there. You even blown my mind. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this this yeah, tool yeah. is amazing, man. This this is this is great. The visual yeah, what, is great. What, what you were, yeah, while you were talking about that, I was thinking, hey, we are we are just showing an example using Ethereum USDC. Yeah. But you can do this with an Ethereum and Bitcoin. Pool, oh man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you can and do then, it with, yeah. with any type of pool. That's the the model applies to every single pool. So if you're pairing Ethereum with, I don't know, Magic, for example. Uh, you will be always maintaining your liquidity measured in Ethereum, so you will be always be winning Ethereum on top of it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's that, exactly. That's that's a great information there, Felix. Um, but then again, we need to keep in mind: please only do it or no. Well, it's not financial advice, but it's always better to do it with assets that you like to um, that you like to accumulate. I'm not going to shill, shill any alts here or something, but Ethereum alt pools. It's always nicer if you're okay with just accumulating more of the alt as well, if Ethereum outperforms the altcoin. Because otherwise, you'll just hold the asset until it goes to zero, right? So even this strategy, it's not completely perfect because uh, it needs um, it needs to be able to go get back to your geometrical mean, right? If it just keeps crashing yeah. against ETH or crashing against Bitcoin, you're still screwed, right? Yeah, you yeah, definitely I, need I, risk management, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. But it's I think it's uh, resonates around the mean reversion, right? I think that's yeah. the key word. So it's at mean reversion, all the conditions are met. It's like you can reinvest your fees with zero permanent yeah. loss. You can yeah. you can do whatever exactly. you want. It's like it, it's the perfect scenario. So you start with one pool at two thousand dollars per Ethereum, and two months later you are back in two thousand dollars per Ethereum. So you win two months of APR on top of that. And in if you exactly. Or bond your fees there, you lock your your wins, right? Yeah, that's it. Exactly, exactly. So you, you can do it with BTC as well with geometrical means. Just goes goes around it. If it breaks top range, you go wider. If it goes back to a geometrical mean, you go you go tighter again. You can do it with with any asset you want, basically. Yeah, it's it, and yeah, yeah, and also I just kind of wanted to touch on the. Uh, w- Probably people are wondering, like, so if if you guys are rebalancing to be break even at the geometric mean, then why is it that you have less uh, crypto and a lesser value back at break even? Well, that's because uh, in in currently right now it's 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 just 
like we don't even know how early we are in the in this space right but liquidity simply is just fragmented right there's it's, there's not a lot of liquidity and people might think wow this this you know billions of liquidity right but yeah sure but it's still not enough right like yeah. think of it as like um like currently in in the current model with v3 <clears throat> you have ticks right liquidity ticks and in between those ticks uh is there's there's like space right there's no liquidity right in between those ticks and depending on what fee tier you're in the 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 ticks get uh closer and closer right so eventually there's going to be um there's going to be a smaller uh fee tiers which means that we're, liquidity providers are going to earn less but on top of that volume is going to increase uh with that increase of liquidity which would oh, eventually overcome uh, higher liquidity fee, uh, fee tiers, right? So um, you already see it today, right? Like say uh, 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 an Ethereum USDC 0.3% liquidity uh, or fee tier, it was it was amazing back in 2021, 20, early yeah. 2022. But today, um, you're not you're you're gonna make more in the 0.05% fee tier. And then uh, last year. Early on, when uh, in early 2023, when the bull market uh, first kicked off, I actually witnessed a 0.01% fee tier that was that had millions. Uh, it was like I think tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of liquidity uh, that was parked in there for like yeah. a very short period of time, and then they they withdrew the liquidity after like probably a couple weeks, right? Um, yeah. So I was like. You know that's pretty interesting. That you know, there's definitely like institutions out there, like testing and 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 they're they're in the game, right? They already know uh -huh. how this game is played, right? They probably already have these models, right? Like and but they're just waiting on the regulation, right? But um, mm -hmm. but definitely to understand, like as time goes on, I wouldn't be surprised to see like a point zero zero one percent fee tier, or eventually it gets it gets so tight that it the 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 fee is like so small but the amount of volume is going to be insane right to to be able to accommodate for that but as time goes on uh, and as if you guys have seen uh, the yields are coming down right and that's just that's just the the trade off right in the in the market right as liquidity increases which is great shows there's interest coming into the space uh that means there's more mouths to feed uh APRs start coming down um, I wouldn't be surprised in the future, like five, ten years from now, we'll see like, you know, you could farm a very tight liquidity pool on Ethereum, but you only get like 5%, you know, or a couple percent, you know. So, um, you know, these type of opportunities aren't going to last forever. And, and just one more point here is just that opportunities, like from what I've seen in the markets, you know, I've, I've been trading for <laughs> almost two decades, right? So, um the best opportunities is when there's inefficiencies in the market and this is a an inefficiency in the market right lack of liquidity yeah. right there's still not there's, enough yeah. liquidity so um that's why it's like important like if you're interested in taking advantage like it's you you got to learn like got to learn it understand it control the impermanent loss and then just get in there right and and start um you know putting your capital to work and take advantage so yeah completely agreed there Flo. there's so many inefficiencies like like we're i'm personally testing a lot of like okay um opening a 0.01 percent pool to fam to 0.05 percent have enough liquidity in there to like accommodate big trades like get a lot of aprs with less paid per and then once other liquidity joins into the pool i switch we switch back again so there's a lot of funny things to do and the amount of inefficient capital i saw in like even Let's say there's like 20 million TVL in, into a wrapped ETH USDC 0.05% pool. Um, the amount of capital that's just in there inefficiently is just insane. So even if you put in the capital a bit more efficiently, you can route a lot more volume through it and get a lot of fees. So I don't think, as you say, like these, these opportunities will last for like five years. I'm not sure. Because once institutions come in, like they'll they'll look at my sort of our excels, right? No offense, and they just say, yeah, okay, that's some newbie newbie crap. But we can we can be like we can extort so much money out of there because of the inefficiencies right now, and and I think it it will it will stay like that for at least another year or two. Um, so it's now Absolutely. it's now to take advantage of it. Yeah, 
definitely. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, honestly, I, you know, it's probably not. I, I would even. I think maybe like a very small percentage, like know exactly how this works, right? Like what you laid out here, um, because even though even though providing liquidity and uh, market making is is an old. Uh, it's just like in it, it's a integral part of uh, integral part of markets, right? Like it's required in markets. So it's like an old. It's it's been around for a long time, right? But Uniswap V3 uh, it puts a puts a twist on it to make it uh, just enough to make it um, make it new, right? So um, the the concept is old. But the tool and the and what you can do is all new. It's just like it's just like new grounds, right? So um, yeah. there's there's a lot of people out there that don't understand how to how to use this, right? And um, <clears throat> this here just shows exactly you know what to do, right? So yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's that's key. So I I have been researching a lot and look looking at the math and everything. It's it's too complex. It's too complex for normal people. And even myself, I studied engineering and I know about integrals and equations and everything, but still uh, putting into a chart like Tintin did, I, I couldn't even do that. But now it's it's kind of perfectly makes sense. Um, speaking about the liquidity and the inefficiencies, so we need to be creative. I love to be creative. So that's why I always come up with <laughs> new ways to take advantage of this, or not take advantage, but actually understand the model and try to uh, make sense, right? Um, so I'm gonna say bye. I need to jump into a, an actual show meeting, but it was a, it was a pleasure to, to share the stage with you guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks Felix. Thanks, and Felix. Thanks for joining. Okay, uh, I, know you have a, I know you have other, uh, another slide, uh, Tin. I, I don't wanna take up any more time. If you want to continue, uh, no, no worries, no worries. I'll, I'll just, it, it takes like five minutes okay. just for the numbers to see to see what we can we, we can actually get out of there. Awesome. It's very arbitrary and it's it's rough. It's it's um maybe it's something to discuss with McDavid as well because I know you guys or uh, or William. I know you guys are uh, are trying to get some tools to better approximate the amount of APRs through backtesting and, and stuff like that. So so that will be super super welcome because it's very hard to do to estimate APRs now. But I I, I tried right. So um. I said like worst case scenario, remember, oh no, yeah, remember when we were here, like this is optimum, optimum, right, to to stay in that range that we had for like 562 days. I put it around here, something like that. I basically took 75 days, okay, in this range, basically. So what, what would we get if we had this model until we move this geometric mean up, we take the impermanent loss, how much would we have made in APRs with like the 10,000 starting capital and, and two ETH, right? So let's let's get in there. So here we have all the multipliers of all the pools before we switch to geometric mean. So very, very simple math. I just took the average out of that. The average is 40.4 is the multiplier. But please remember, guys, you can be very lucky and have liquidity stay for a longer time in like the 71.02 uh tight range right so it's very arbitrary everything it's it's quite of like almost the worst case scenario basically but i took the average multiplier for those 75 days to be like 40.4 times more efficient than you in swap v2 and you in swap v2 like DeFi lab states it's 2.83 percent apr right for uni v2 on wrapped eth usdc We've come a long way, man, because in the bear market, it was it was like 1.2% or something. So we're happy people um, today if you're in liquidity. So that's cool. Um, so that would give us an estimated APR of 114%. This is on a blue chip with stables, man. This is it, It's pretty impressive for me, uh, at least. And, and we have like really good... Um, our portfolios are doing really well today, so we're happy. Um, but this would mean that in those 75 days... We would have made two thousand three hundred and seventy-five US dollars, right, on 10, 10 grand, ten k. And remember to put in perspective, um, the impermanent loss that we took here are very small numbers. It's like one hundred twenty-seven dollars, maybe, at the uh, at the geometric mean. But even if you calculate, like, if you want to take the impermanent loss to the top, 
we had an impermanent loss of 1,430 US dollars. So even that, like we blew it out of the water, right? We had 700 USD more than the impermanent loss taken if we, if we start from here. And remember, I calculate like this is what we need to make in the next range for a while, right? To beat everyone in the market. Yeah, yeah that, just to clarify, that's the hodl. Like if someone was just holding yeah. the tokens in their wallet, not providing liquidity, right? So even a hodler gets blown out of the water in this case, right? And yeah. I, I think that's a big stigma in the space. Uh, you know, even from over the past couple of years, a lot of people have in their minds that this doesn't work. Uniswap V3 doesn't work. Uh, impermanent loss uh, is just like, it, it's, a, it's, it's a bug, right? People are like, how do you remove impermanent loss? Well, no, it's not. Impermanent loss is, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going on a tangent here, but impermanent loss is actually a feature and is actually a tool within Uniswap. It's a way to mitigate risk, right? You, if, if, you, if you're locking in impermanent loss, it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you do it on purpose by design, it's a way to mitigate risk. Now, for instance, say if your liquidity pool is going out of range to the downside, right? You're like, okay, well, I think Ethereum is going to keep going lower. Well, you want to sell off some more Ethereum more than you need to keep impermanent loss neutral. Because if you're thinking price is going to continue down, maybe you don't want as much exposure to the downside. So you sell off more than you need and that's locking in some impermanent loss. But what it's doing is it's mitigating some risk, right? Like the, the, the top priority of your portfolio is to reduce, mitigate risk, right? So um, if you had like, it's, it's one of those, it's, it's, that, it's that safeguard, right, for you. Impermanent loss is a safeguard in a way to reduce risk, right? So, you, you know, th don't look at it as impermanent loss as a bad thing, right? It's a way to mitigate risk. So I know uh, I kind of went off there, but, you know, I just want to clarify that. No, definitely. It's super important. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's, it's, and, and this is why I love this, um, uh, this strategy here from Felix, because you have more control. I, I, I find I have more control over when I take my impermanent loss. And that's just beautiful. Um, so yeah, good, good extra info there. Um, do I have something else to share? Uh, no, that's, that's all from my, from my, um, from my point actually today. Um, I hope it helped. I don't know if, if a lot of people are still there because it can be quite geeky and quite boring, but I think it's super important um, to try and get it now, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we'll forward this to McDavid and his team and see what they can do with this and uh, implement. Because uh, yeah, the, the recurring rebalancer, uh, yeah. like it's, it's great from the onset, like the launch. I, I like it. I really like it. Um, but uh now it needs some fine tuning and i think like to implement something like this to because like felix said and you said like this this stuff is like it's too much right like oh man like i have to learn all this stuff like no you don't have to learn all this right um just a, like for me like i don't know these formulas i'm not i'm not a formula guy but um i've traded markets for a long time so i you know, I see this in my head, right? From because uh, I come from an option selling background, so it it, it kind of rhyme or just kind of like I saw a little uh, some, you know, comparisons or similarities between the the two, right? So um, I just see this in my head, but for most people, they uh, especially newcomers into the market, they're not they're just gonna look at this like, man, this is too much. I'm just gonna hold the asset. Well. If McDavid and his team can create that convenience, right? And I, you know, like coming from <laughs> if coming from a corporate back background in in my past life, if you could create convenience for people, they will pay for it, right? They will pay, yeah, you know, whatever the, you know, they will pay more than what they need, you know, to have that convenience. Depending how much how much that convenience can and can uh, improve their lives, right? And uh, already this tool, the Aperture Finance tool, saves a lot of time, right? Before I had, like, <laughs> in the early days, like, if you have a tight liquidity pool, 
I would get up multiple times per night just to check it and like, okay, is it out of range? Is it out of range? Right? So, but now you have that safeguard of using this tool to rebalance for you while you're not there. Right. And, and, and it could just kind of keep you in the game, so to speak, while you're not available. And that's huge already. Now, if they could take it a step further and be like, okay, for guys like us, that are like, okay, I need to control this in permanent loss though. I mean, this is great, but I need to control this in permanent loss. I need to be able to, to, to be able to lo- to, to really uh, fine tune how much I want to take in. Now, if, uh, if they could implement this, that would be a huge game changer, right? So, um, it would be, yeah. Definitely, yeah. So, and, and I see McDavid joined. Hi, McDavid. Um, there he is, yeah. So watch this video, McDavid. <laughs> yeah, <we're watching laughs> like this is really good, and, and, and it's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no, no. We, we we talked about a lot of stuff, man. This is. I think it's it's a, it's an information packed one. Maybe last thing I'll share is is I, I've done like twenty minutes of thinking, maybe how to put it in the rebalancer. But but float. I think we we should get another call with with Felix. Maybe to just talk about that now we have the basics and the theory basically behind it but maybe every time um so the limit breaks after the first pull um rebalance automatically to a certain percentage wider around the geometric mean right uh, because once once we break like the first pull um we don't the uh the bottom range is the geometric mean we will never go back to the bottom range once we break like the first one right so so maybe that's something to integrate um and then once the final price is reached for upper or bottom, so this one here, where we move the geometric mean, we can close the pool and start over with new geometric mean. But basically that geometric mean will be your like um, lower limit automated rebalance. But I mean, it's, it's, it's super early to think about it, but it might be quite complex. Um, yeah, that'd be like version, there. version four or five. And yeah, 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 I guess. yeah, just yeah. the small changes and we, we can get there. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, guys, so that's, that's everything from my part. Um, McDavid, please know I'm always available in my, my DMs as well. Uh, if you have questions on the video, uh, I think float, you recorded it as well, right? Yeah, I did record it. And I just want to say that, you know, it's definitely a sign because Uniswap is pumping as well. My bags are, yeah. are nice today. So just want to lay that out. You know, there, there's definitely something here. One hundred. <laughs> you know, there's yeah, definitely no, something have, here, right? Years. So, um, I truly believe that, right? And uh, uh, if if McDavid and his team could uh, be so kind to give us even more convenience on this, <laughs> would be amazing. Like, I, I just want to be able to just log in and look at it and not have to manage it, right? <laughs> Man, imagine that! Like just free money flow, like free money. Like That's where the free money comes in. Manager in the early two thousands, <laughs> before he realized he had to hire fifty developers. Yes, <laughs> no, I understand. But yeah, if, if we can do the work for like three days in modeling and just model it out and then just put it in the tool for like two months, my god, that would be awesome. But hey, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right, yeah, that's all I had. So, uh, yeah, thanks, man. This is amazing. Like, I didn't even know you were going to present this. This is this like the visual is a thousand times it. better because I'm always trying to explain it and out of my head, yeah. and it just it it's hard to understand, right? So, this is amazing. Awesome, man. Cool. Glad I could help. Um, I'm still like doing a lot of research in this as well, like internally in the teams. We're trying to do indie, um, like create more indicators for it uh, with Felix and stuff. So if you have questions, please do. But it's, it's yeah. If, I, I learned it all from Float, so just know that. Yeah. If <laughs> if if somebody wanted to say, hey, uh, how do I get this, or how do I do, do they have to subscribe to your Discord, or how 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 would they get access to this tool? Like if somebody... oh, to the, uh, to the, to the uh, trading view indicators. Yeah. Um, so right now it's, it's only for, uh, the French community, but we're trying to put it next week to be able to, um, to get you those, uh, indicators for like a flat one year fee. I think it's going to be like $40 to get all the indicators for a year. Um, oh, that's amazing, then, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, that... and then once it's zero, let's just let you know. Definitely. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, especially like, uh, more of the smaller, uh, retail, right? Like. It, it, a lot of tools out there like man they charge way too much like like say revert finance they have their uh 
you know, their range mover and, and, you know, it's kind of like uh, a little automation, but uh, I don't, I haven't looked in the, in, in, I haven't looked recently, but last I checked was like, they were charging like 0.1% per, per rebalance. And I was like, it, it's just too much. Like it, for those that want automation, you want more frequency in automation, right? So you want it to rebalance more times because you're going to probably be a lot tighter than you would if you were manually managing it, right? And those fees just add up and it just gets astronomical to the point where like, it's not even worth it right like you're you're just the risk you're taking just to give it up to the fees is 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 a lot right so like to have it like you know 40 bucks a year i mean shit i'm gonna sign up like i i need this you know this this would be amazing i know and it's, it's just like trading view indicators right yeah Ford, it's not an it's not the it's not automated for your pools or something just to draw no yeah yeah, yeah absolutely right? and yeah? because oh, okay because i'm always in DeFi labs right i'm always in DeFi labs like sucks, modeling out what, yeah. and that it it just like it takes so much time, you know, like, I mean, once you get the idea, like, uh, for mo most of the part, or uh, I'll just say like most of the part, most of the time, um, I do it in my head, right? Like I understand, like I've done it enough to know a, a general idea, right? But like for those yeah. that are very precise and are learning, right? Um, this, this would like speed up that, uh, just those calculations and the modeling out Definitely. of your liquidity pools because you can use this uh, uh, just to say like people can use this to to model out liquidity pools on that pair you know a year out or like you know not that far out because the markets are, are just volatile right and nobody knows where it's going to go but you can go out like a few a few rebalances into the future right even three four or five rebalances and when when those price triggers hit uh or you know where those price triggers are you can enter them in into aperture finance and it'll rebalance for exactly. you at those triggers right so yeah. it'll rebalance for you it's already doing it for you so what that does is it removes emotion out of your trading right because you know when markets get active or very volatile you know, we're just humans, right? So people get emotional and they'll do a knee jerk reaction. Oh, let me just get out, right? But if you have a plan in place and know exactly what's going to do, you remove that emotion. And then when you have that automation, it further removes that emotion. And you're just like, you're just, you're yeah. just, you're just sailing, you're just sailing the waves, right? Like you, you know where you're going and, and you just, you're just there for the ride. You know, you know, sometimes it's going to get volatile. Um, of course, you have that, that, you have the risk management to have that 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 exit button, you know, in case things go go to crap, right? So, but it, for the most part, you know, um, you have your plan. Uh, you you let automation execute on that plan, and then you just you know you just chill, you know, and, That's and it, let yeah. it do its thing, yeah. you know. Let the market do yeah, its it thing. Just, yeah. Time in the market very important, right? A lot of people like to like <clears throat> when the markets are pumping, like, hey, should I get in and start providing liquidity? Like, well. You know, what have you been doing the whole time? Well, you know, if the markets fall, then what? What are you, are you going to freak out? You know, so it's kind of like you have to go with the ups and downs, right? Like it's kind of like that saying, like, uh, if you don't like it at its worst, then you don't, you don't deserve it at its, at its best, right? So um, you have to just be in in the markets. If you're going to be doing, providing liquidity, right? If, if you're just going to be in and out of the markets, you're better off trading. Like I always say that, like you're better off just trading the markets if you're going to do that, right? But if you want to, own the asset if you want to be in for for the long term and, and here and there yeah you're going to find opportunities where they're very short term like a couple days like shit coins la launching and they're very high volume right on a one percent tier oh those things are printing like ten thousand percent aprs right so you you want to jump in those and this aperture finance tool the recurring rebalancer could help you manage that right but for the most part like time in the market staying in there staying in the game right um, managing your risk that and, and and it's just a marathon right it's it's not a sprint exactly right yeah. you, you, that that's you know that's kind of like my spiel on it so um yeah so that's all i got i know this thing went way probably longer than expected but this is i think it's great <laughs> well it's always interesting yeah i love it as well um so yeah i'll um i'll, I'll let you know when the indicators are there we're, we're still working on it by the way our uh our developer, it's uh, it's Pippo Master. He's in the he's in the audience as well, so he's the brain behind all of this. Um, but once they're all ready, I'll uh, I'll let you guys know if you're interested. 
um, and I'll give a small tutorial on them as well. So a small plug there from our part. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Cool. Yes. Appreciate it, Tin. That was amazing. Um, thanks, McDavid, for and uh, thanks for McDavid and Aperture Finance team for hosting this. Um, yeah, make sure to share it out, guys. Everyone just share it in their socials, especially people that love providing liquidity. This I think this here is like um, probably the. <laughs> This is probably the top most. This I, I just see this as like having the visual. It has everything you need to be able to get started and and understand. Right? Of course, you could pin, uh, ping me or Tin, uh, or or even Felix, right? To to get info on like, okay, how how do I get started? Right? So, um, yeah, yeah, you can uh, like for me, feel free to join my discord. It's, it's free to join. You know, I do have a premium area, but it, it, like I'm willing to a answer questions in the free channels. Right. So, you know, join up, ask questions I'm more than happy to answer. So definitely, man, definitely go, go, uh, go have a look at flows. Discord It's full of, full of knowledge and it's only guys doing concentrated liquidity. So yeah, that's <laughs> really all it is. Concentrated liquidity. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I do have like all coins that I buy and stuff, but it's focused okay, around cool. concentrated. Yeah. Nice. But uh awesome. but yeah. Awesome. I'll come over. Thanks floats. Uh thanks guys. Um it's recorded. So I'll uh, I'll give you all the links needed soon. And uh thanks. See you soon. Perfect. See you guys. Bye.